guys, it's Trish. Welcome back to another video by Dress It Up Buttons, also featuring Jesse James Beads. Today we're going to be making a fun Nemo necklace. And of course, I'm going to show you what you need here. And the first thing is going to be your Finding Nemo buttons with all the critters from the movie in there. Super fun, super cute. I love the colors of this. They just really pop. You're going to need six packages of the Micro Hearts. And I chose coordinating colors. You can choose whatever you like to go with it. I also got some Chain Reaction. I'm going to be using that in the turquoise color and silver. I'm going to be using a mini mix. Blue's Raspberry Ice Pop is the name of this one. I'm going to be using some Soft Flex in turquoise. This is the medium weight. A magnetic clasp. Some jump rings some glue on bales, and of course some crimp tubes. So to get started guys, the first thing I did was I cut off the shanks on the buttons and I glued on the glue on bales onto the buttons. I just used a little bit of super glue, but you're want to, gonna wanna do that ahead of time because if not, you know, it won't be dry for you and they take a chance of it, you know, not curing correctly. Um, I just laid out my buttons here so for easy access. I have a few jump rings off to the side here and my crimps. So what you're going to do first is you're going to cut three, three and a half inch pieces of soft flex. Okay, so you're going to need these for your buttons. And the first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to put a crimp on. And like I said, these are number two crimp tubes. You can use whatever size crimp makes you happy and works with the wire. So I just put that crimp on, and what we're doing here is we're just making a loop on the top so we can then slide it onto our necklace. Okay, so I'm just taking that crimp tube, sliding it on, and then I'm taking the other end and I'm pushing it down through. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna see what size of loop I wanna make. And we're just going to need it to slide over the wire because there's going to be beads on either side of it. All right. I'm going to leave that a little bigger. So I'm going to leave it about like that. Okay. And then we're just going to come in and we're going to crimp. These are the regular crimp pliers that you can get in any craft store. But the trick for these is you see this little back area that's kind of shaped like a C. You want to do that first and then the front second, okay? So all I'm doing is I'm holding my wire with my crimp tube on it and my loop in my hand. And I'm going to take it and put it in the C shape in the back. Okay, I'm just going to sit that in there so you can see that, okay? And I'm just going to give that a squeeze, okay? So once you squeeze that, it gives you that C shape. I know it's really hard to see guys. Wonder if I bring it up here. There we go. So it gives you that C shape. So in essence, by it push pushing in the middle of that crimp, then you're gonna be able to fold it over and make it smaller. You don't have to. If you wanted to keep it just like this, you could, but I'm gonna fold mine over because I like the look of that. All right, so I'm just taking it in the front and giving it a squeeze. And then you can see we have a really nice crimp done there. I'm gonna take my pliers in here. These are some heavier duty pliers. You don't wanna use your flush cutters that you use to cut wire, of course. So I'm gonna trim that, going in there and I'm just trimming that off so that looks nice. I'm checking my crimp, make sure that that's solid. And basically, in essence, you can either use this as your top loop or your bottom loop, okay? So let's go ahead and use that as our bottom loop so I can show you easily how to put on your Nemo button. Of course, he's going to be the center of the party. I'm going to move that up here for you. And I'm just going to hook him on there with a jump ring. And it's as simple as picking a jump ring. This, I believe, is about a five millimeter jump ring. And I'm going to hook that through the loop See how I put that glue on bail on there? I'm just gonna hook that through that loop there and then hook it onto my wire in through my loop that we made, okay? So I have that closed and always remember guys, when you're closing your jump rings, you're front to back on those. 
Just rocking that back and forth. So there you go. He's on that wire. Now you're asking, okay, what's next here? What are we doing next? Well, I came up with this idea to do like an ombre effect down, down each wire. So the next thing you want to do is pick the coordinating buttons that you're using for that specific button. So I'm going to start by doing, I'm going to use orange and pink for Nemo. I just think it'll be fun. And I'm going to start out with the darkest orange heart. And I'm going to choose one side or the other to put that string through. Because you can see we have two holes. Of course, it's a button. And I'm going to put it put the button on through that hole that I've chosen, okay? We have our heart on there, so we're gonna go ahead and put the crimp over that, put that on top of that. You can see how I have that, okay? And I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put it in where the C is in the back, squeeze it, and then go to the front and fold it over, okay? Get that. All right, so that's our first heart. So as I'm putting these on, I'm going to go back and forth between the two colors that I've picked. And I'm also gonna go back and forth through the holes that I'm putting them in. So it kind of builds, to me it almost looks like seashells by the time you're done putting them on there, but um, let's put this one on and see we're gonna go into this side of the hole this time, okay? I'm going to put that up through there. And then again, we're just going to slide on another crimp. And we're going to crimp that in through the, put it into the C shape and crimp that. And move it up to the front and squeeze it. Now you can see there, it just kind of slipped a little bit for me. That happens sometimes. Don't get discouraged. And then you just fold that over, guys. Simple as that. We'll do... And what I'm doing also, guys, before I move on to some more, I'm doing the darkest of one color, the darkest of the other color. Then I'm going to go to the next darkest of one, the one color and back to the next darkest of the second color. And it's just kind of giving you almost an ombre effect, uh, which I think looks really cool. So next we're going to do orange and we're going to want to pick out the next... Or just one, I think. And I just hold them up and look at them. Are these the same? Yes, those are the same. So I'm going to pick up maybe one of these. Okay. So we did it on the right side hole last time. We're going to put it into the left-hand side hole this time. Okay. And slide another crimp. shape front to fold over okay and then we're gonna pick the next color of heart which to me looks like this color and we used it on the left the left hole this time so we're gonna go to the right hole for the next one last time I mean and to the right side and I've been trying to put like six buttons on each. You can do how many you like, but um, it seems to me like six or seven seems to be a nice number. So it doesn't make the the parts that hang down too awful long, okay? So I just slipped on another crimp there. And we're gonna do the C shape in the back up to the front. Put our next crimp on. So we're gonna go to back to our orange and let's see, maybe this one. And we're gonna put that on the left. Okay. And we're gonna put a crimp on again. So that's our fifth heart. And we're going to crimp that in the back with the C shape and then to the front to fold it over. If I can get there, we go. Fold it over there. All right, so one more. Let's do a really light pink. It looks like a pretty light one. 
and that's going to go on the left the left hand hole okay so our last crimp for the hearts and same thing and then fold over okay so we're going to do um, the two wires now because we're going to make a loop to slide it onto the necklace for when we're beading. I'm just going to give that a better squeeze because I want to make sure that that folded over nicely. Okay. So that's what we have so far, guys. And you can see the little hearts. They can go side to side. They can move around on there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put another crimp on and we're going to do the same thing we did for this bottom loop, okay? We're going to run our wire down through the crimp. Okay, so I'm just folding that over and pushing that down inside that crimp. I sure am. I'm pushing that down inside the crimp and you don't want it to go... Well, it doesn't matter, I guess, if it goes through your hole in your heart when you're... um stringing because you're gonna cut that off anyway. So we're just gonna get that. And where I'm having this is I'm putting it right next to the crimp that we just did at the top of the heart so it's all nice and neat, okay? And then you have your loop. And you're making sure that your wires are staying uncrossed. Okay, so I brought that around and now my loop or my strand is on this side and that's where I brought it through. And we're just gonna crimp that. You can also, guys, if you want to step it up a notch, you can also put crimp covers on. That would look really nice. I'm just kind of keeping this simple for you. You can make it your own, of course. But there's that. And then we're going to... Let me get my pliers here. We're going to pull that wire out there because it did go down through one of the hearts. Okay. And we're just going to snip it just like we did the other. And we're going to pull on the wire and press the pliers again so you get the nice clean cut. There you go. So Nemo is ready to be put on the necklace. So guys, I am going to go ahead and make these other two. I'm not going to bore you with all of those steps over again. I'm sure you have gotten it by now. And then once I get those done, I'll be back and we'll assemble our necklace. Hey guys, uh, so I did finish both of the other buttons uh, with the hearts on them. And I think they came out really cute. I'm super tickled with the way they look. I also laid out a pattern with my blue raspberry mix of the idea of how I'm gonna want to string this necklace. And that's always a good idea because then you can kind of get a feel for what you're gonna be doing with it. Now when I string, I string right on the roll of soft flex. So then there is less waste. Uh, at least that's what I find. So uh, we're gonna start stringing our pattern. It's as simple as putting your beads on, okay? And I'm going to show you here, uh, coming up, how we're going to put on our little pieces that we made with our buttons as well. So I'm just stringing that beautiful rondelle on there. A couple more here. And I decided to use these really cool cube beads next to our focal pieces. Thought they looked really neat and they're going to keep them in place nice. So you'll see on either side of what we've made here, there's going to be a uh, cube bead on either side, either side of them. That's kind of like the pattern that I decided to do. So I'm going to do here is I'm going to string our little turtle friend on here on either side. I'm going to have one of those cube beads. Oops, sorry guys, I'm just getting that in place. Cute bead, so that'll keep it in place nicely for us. So, I'm just going to string on some more of these. And I'm going to show you Nemo here in a second. And I did decide to incorporate some tassels. <clears throat> I just thought that would look really cool in between uh, the button focals. So, um, let's see, where are we? Okay, so we're going to put this on. We're going to add in a little bit of metal. And this is a beautiful mix for that. So, 
I decided to go with the blue theme because of the ocean. I just thought that would be super, super cute. So, but. Mm. And we're going to put this on. And then, no, we're going to put the tassel on after that large bead. And then we're going to put our little bead that I have here. These are like a milky blue color. And some check glass we have here, some table cut check glass. And then our next cube, our Nemo. And there he is. So cute. There is so much you can do with these heart buttons, guys. I mean, it's endless. Especially with all of the beautiful colors that they have them in. It's super fun. Okay, guys, so I'm going to continue stringing this on, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so we have it all strung on. I'm super happy with it. I did decide to put a bicone on either end because the hole in the end of this bead is a little large, and I don't want my crimp tube to slip down inside there. So what I did is I left about three inches on either end. I cut it off the spool, and now we're going to crimp either end of this and leave a loop so we can hook it into our beautiful chain. So it's going to be the same process that we did earlier. And we're going to have our two wires this time as we did when we made our loops. And it's the same thing. Now, what you can do, guys, if you feel more comfortable, you can put a little spring on the end here. If you have a little spring or a little clip, just to keep this from moving. If you don't feel comfortable crimping and, you know, having everything slide off, I think I'm going to be okay. But that is an option for you. So we put our crimp on. And I'm going to slide our wire down through like we did before. Okay. And it's down through that crimp. So a closer look for you here, guys. I am feeding this wire down through this crimp tube here, guys. Okay. And it's going to go beside the other one. That's why I like the number two tubes because the wires fit in nicely. Not too big, not too small. So I fed that down on this side. So I'm keeping it on the side that I pushed it down through. And I'm just going to pull to make a loop there. Now on this side, you don't need to worry about tension because we're going to worry about that on the other side. Um, we're going to do the same kind of crimp that we did earlier and we're going to take our crimp pliers in and we're going to crimp with the C and then crimp with the front and fold it over okay that's just like a perfect little crimp and we're going to do the same thing I'm a firm believer if you check it and everything feels great you can just trim this wire off um, because my thinking is on this, a lot of people like to feed it down through. I, I guess it makes them feel like safer or whatever, but it's not going to hold anything. If that crimps is going to give, it's going to give. So, and, and all it's going to do is it's going to come out and it may poke the person you're making for this in the neck. So that's quite uncomfortable. So we have our loop. You can see here, and I'm pushing my beads up to that crimp that we did. Okay. And on this end, I'm going to do the same thing. Now, this is where we're going to look at tension. We want our buttons to be able to move and our little tassels. We don't want them to be crammed in there so they're not really having any motion to them. I think it looks best when you give a little room to groove between your beads. It doesn't have to be a lot. You don't want a lot because you don't want to see a bunch of string. But you just want enough of breathing room in there so everything can kind of move. Okay, so I'm going to take this end here and I'm just going to put another crimp tube on. And we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side. And then run this down through the crimp. Okay, and I'm going to poke it out the bottom. You can see how that's coming out there and I'm just going to grab it with my fingers and pull. Now, I'm just going to work as I'm pulling this to get the kind of tension that I want. I'm just gonna work this loop down to the size that I want it. I'm gonna slip that down and see, is that the right tension for me? I like that size because it matches the other side, but is that 
the right tension and I'm I want to back off a smidge so I'm going to stick my thumbnail in between where that bead and that crimp is guys and I'm just going to push my thumbnail in there okay that's going to give us a little breathing room so let's look at it again and see um our tassels still seem pretty tight <clears throat> let's see they still seem a little tight so I'm just going to do that again and just make a little bit more room with my thumbnail and I'm just slightly pulling up and there you go you got lots of room to groove everything looks pretty and happy and it's able to move so we're going to do the same thing we're going to keep our wire on the side that we put it down through I'm going to make that loop just a smidge smaller okay and I'm going to go in there and crimp with the back and then turn it around, turn the uh, crimp plier around and crimp with the front, okay? And same thing, we're just gonna trim this wire off here. And I'm pulling tension and pushing my pliers up into it, right up against that crimp and snipping it, okay? All right, so that is our focal piece done. Now we're just gonna add our chain and our clasp which is the easy part, guys. So here's the chain that I chose, as you saw in the opening. It's a beautiful silver chain reaction chain, and I love the look of this. It reminded me of waves. So I have quite the imagination, but I thought that would be fun to use for our back pieces. And then a really fun crimp, a magnetic crimp from Jesse James Beads as well. We're just gonna need four jump rings, that's all. And that's gonna make it easy for us to hook everything together. So I'm just gonna get a couple chain nose pliers. These are actually chain nose and tweezer pliers that I'm using there. And I'm gonna grab a jump ring. And it's just as simple as this. Opening your jump ring front to back as always. Feeding it through the loop on the one side of your necklace. Feeding it through the chain loop. I've cut these chain to six inch lengths. Um, it comes in an 18 inch length chain when you get the chain reaction. So I have decided to do my necklace 21 inches. So I've done six and six, okay? So I'm going to then close our jumper again. We're going back and forth for that as well. Just kind of working it in there, pushing in just perfectly lined up. And there we go for that. And then the other side. Through the loop. Okay. And through the loop in the chain. And go back and forth. Front to back, guys. And you don't want to do this too many times because you may uh, break your jump ring. But you're just kind of pushing and small little movements there trying to get your jump ring to line up. Okay, there you go. And then the same thing for the back when we do our jump rings to hook in our magnetic clasp. Just opening that up, going through the end of my chain, going through the end of my clasp. There we go. And then we're going to close that up. And you gotta watch when you're using a magnetic clasp because your pliers will stick to it sometimes. But basically we're just gonna close our jump ring as we have. And then do the other side, guys. And hook that in through our loop. It's a little bit of a tight squeeze there, but we got it. And we're just going to close that jump ring. So that is it guys. This is our super fun Finding Nemo necklace featuring Nemo and some heart buttons and some Jesse James beads. I hope you guys enjoyed this because I certainly enjoyed putting it together and I'll see you in the next one guys.